Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Helia Demo Day for the 20th of February 2023. Uh, I'm Aking Brain, I will be your host. We're going to go through uh, what's new since the last um, the last Demo Day, well, a brief overview of what Helia is, what's new, uh, what's coming next, and then we'll have some time for Q&A. Uh, so I am going to start sharing my screen. Okay, this is me. I'm making brain on the internet. Um, I'm on the IP stewards team. Uh, I'm the maintainer of JSLIP P2P, JSIPFS, and now Helio. So here's what we're going to cover, uh, what Helio is, some demos, and then some time for Q&A. So what is it? Um, I went through this uh, last time, so I'm going to go through it a lot quick, more quickly this time. Um, in, in, in essence, it's a replacement for JSIPFS. Um, it's smaller, faster, uh, and it is more uh more sympathetic to the environment that you, that you are working in like the web uh and more lightweight um with fewer apis fewer ways to do the same thing uh just hopefully a better implementation in general um so the api is very simple it tries to be agnostic about as many things as possible uh so all it is is a block store uh which is uh, a place for you to put blocks, unsurprisingly, um, which is backed by BitSwap. So if you try to get something from the bits from the block store uh, and you don't have a given block for the CID, it will go to the network and it will fetch it. Um, it has a data store, which lets you store uh, application specific data. So things like DHT records and IPNS records and anything really that your application needs to store. Um, this can be backed by a level database or stored on a file system or some other implementation. Uh, it supports pinning, so if you uh, have DAGs that are important to you, you can pin the root of the DAGs, uh, and then it will. You can run garbage collection, and it will delete blocks that are not part of those DAGs. Um, and lib P2P, so the networking layer is lib P2P, uh, exactly the same as JSIPFS, uh, with the same uh, features and limitations, uh, but it does not try to re-implement or uh, you know uh, mirror any of the APIs in the P2P entire the P2P node is exposed, um, which takes care of things like PubSub and the DHT and, and all that kind of low level stuff that you generally don't think about when you're dealing with file systems. Um, so it tries to favor composition uh, rather than trying to uh, add functions and methods for every possible opportunity and every possible bit of functionality. Uh, so you will typically see components accept a Helio node and then extend its functionality by uh, adding code that then calls methods on the block store and the data store. So new from this time uh, last uh, from the last uh, demo day examples. So we now have a Helio examples repo. It's in the IPFS examples org. There's a few simple examples in it. Uh, the Helio 101 how to use Helio from common JS. This perennial issue that never seems to go away. I can't use Helio in CDS. Yes, you can. You totally can. Look, there's, a, there's an example in everything. You can copy and paste the code uh, and just become productive immediately. And then a demo of how to use it with Webpack, uh, which is just the first of many um, examples of how to use these things with common uh, tools you'll notice that this is actually part of um, a lot of these things. Oh gosh, these uh, examples are similar to ones in the JSIPFS repo. Uh, that's because they've been ported over to use the new API. So just a very quick demo. Uh, it's not really a demo. I'm just gonna show you the, the repo examples. Uh, yeah, so this is the, the repo. So you've got a list of examples. You can go in and have a look at them. So the CDS one, for example, uh, it just has the example code, runs a simple um, runs a simple program using Helio that demonstrates the bit of functionality that it's trying to show you. And there's a test to ensure that we don't break these things. I will let you peruse these things at your leisure. Okay. What else? UnixFS. So the first version of uh, Helia's UnixFS implementation is shipped. 
Um, what is it? Well, it's a way of doing file system operations. It's probably what you came here for. Um, the way it tries to differentiate itself from the JSI view, so the learnings that we've applied are that you want operations that you recognize. You don't want to use es esoteric API to do really simple things like add a file to a directory. So for example, in JSIPFS, well, in Cubo and JSIPFS by extension, the most ergonomic way to use UnixFS is basically MFS. So the MFS is a, um, a set of commands that you can use to operate on a single DAG um, and do things like add directories and add files to those directories and that kind of thing. Uh, which then all trickles up to a root CID that's stored in a known location in the data store. Um, and, change, and that changes all the time. There's like way more information than you need when all you really want to do is add a file to a directory. So what a lot of people end up doing is they drop down to the object API and then you're in, you're deep into like DAG nodes and DAG links and all this kind of stuff, which has got nothing to do with adding a file to a directory. So the API of Helios Unix of S implementation very much tries to give you the kind of primitives that you would expect. It's also, it's not opinionated about how to import a DAG. So Cuba and JSIFS by extension has this add uh, uh, method that accepts all kinds of input uh, and transforms it into a stream of, of files and folders and all this kind of thing, um, which a lot of people find a little hard to use and so on and so forth. So, um, UnixFS, like Helios UnixFS implementation doesn't really try too hard to get you to import content in certain ways. So you can use the importer, UnixFS importer, or you can use some of these other implementations of UnixFS that is bringing up, like the IPLD uh, UnixFS implementation, which is a different implementation that kind of focuses on web streams um, and this kind of thing. Uh, it doesn't have all the features that the IPFS Unix of S implementation has. It doesn't support sharding, for example. It doesn't support metadata. Maybe these things are important to you. Um, maybe having just a smaller, you know, uh, implementation is important. And in which case, Helio doesn't stand in your way. As long as you can get the blocks into the block store, it's happy. So a quick demo, a very quick demo. Uh, change my screen. This is using the Helio examples repo. So here's the here's a, a, a thing. So we create. I'm not going to go through all the code. So I did go through some of this last time, but in brief, you create yourself a lib P2P node. You have a block store and a data store. You pass all these things to Helio. Um, you then have a UnixFS function. So this UnixFS function is imported from the Helio slash UnixFS module. You pass in your Helio node and you get a file system uh, object back, which has all these methods that you can call. First thing that we need to do is we need to create an empty directory um, to put things into. So the UnixFS importer exposes a function called import directory, which we're just going to call to create an empty directory. Um, and we're going to print the CID out. We're going to turn it into a v0 CID because for reasons that will become apparent shortly. So if I just run my um, my code, you see, oh, look, it's the old QM models, the MTCID. That's great. What do we do with it? OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to take the empty data CID, and I'm going to make a directory inside it called bar. And that's going to give me a new CID. And then once I've got that CID, I'm just going to list the contents of, of this new CID. So now I have the empty, uh, the empty CID, the empty directory CID, and then the contents of my, my folder, uh, which is a directory called bar with the path, this path, uh, and here's the CID of bar. I've got a function that I can call to get the content of it. 
uh, I've got some Unix invest metadata um, and some some extra information. So here's my DAG node that backs the uh, the root node of that that CID uh, and the size, etc. So you know some some things are interesting. So the size is a big int; it is no longer a number. This is because in the Unix FS data structure, sizes are UN sixty fours, and that means that there are directory there are structures in Unix FS that you can get that you can't actually represent in JavaScript using regular numbers. The so things are now big ints. What else are we going to do? So we can add a file. So if I do file CID equals wait uh, import byte. Which I'm going to import from the importer. Create some bytes, you int meet array from zero, one, two, whatever. Very small. Okay. And then I pass in a block store. Now I have a file CID. And I can then go ahead and copy it somewhere. So const final dear CID await fs dot copy the source CID, which is my file CID, the target, which is the folder. So it could be an updated CID, and then the name of my file. So as dot text. And then what I'll do is I will list out the contents of that directory again. So you'll notice that I'm passing, I start with this CID, and then I do an operation on it, and I receive a new CID. I do an operation on it here, and I receive another new CID. So all the way, I'm, mutate, I'm, I'm getting new DAGs built behind the scenes. And I can obviously step back in time and use previous CIDs, and then I will see the state of the DAG it, as it were before I did this operation on it. So if I run again, da, da, da. oh, I broke it. Bad part. Yeah, wait, I need to block slime on there. No, I didn't. And I'll wait somewhere. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do. Uh, I'll see it. Okay. I'm not okay. Live coding. What fun. Anyway, okay. So here I have my empty CID. I've created a directory called bar. Uh, and then blah, 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 blah. I've added my file. There's my file CID. I copy it into the directory. And finally, I list the directory. And look, I've got a directory and I've got a file. Incredible. So a few things that's interesting to note. I mentioned the size being big ints. The CIDs come back to V1 by default. There are raw leaves by default. Um, these are all the kind of the things that we wanted to make, the changes that we wanted to make for more uh, for more um, efficient DAGs and that kind of thing. So those are the defaults. But obviously, if you want the old school versions, you can you can just pass an options object into the importer, you can change the CID version back to zero, or they use the false, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can also do, you know, you can change your layout. So you might want a trickle DAG or something. Uh, it's up to you. It's up to you. Wonderful. What, what a great lot of choice you have. Okay. No share. Back to the demo. Okay. Enough of that. Right. What else? Okay. So IPNS. Totally shipped the first RPNS implementation. What is it? Like, it's this is, you know, it's something that people ask for a lot. 
mutable pointers, like CIDs are great until like people are like, oh, I've got my website on IPFS, this is great. Here's a CID. Oh, I need to update my website. Oh, okay, the, the content's still low. Anyway, so IPNS is this way that you uh, have mutable data pointers. So you have a peer ID. Well, you have a public key. And the easiest way to have a public key in IPFS is to have a peer ID, which is a public key. Uh, and you publish a record um, that corresponds to that public key that then results to a CID. In order to resolve it, you uh, you either, well, you have to receive an updated record somehow. So that means you either do a DHD query, or maybe you're subscribed to a PubChub channel for those IPNS records, and you receive updated ones. Um, a lot of moving parts, fundamentally. Very hard to debug, uh, because there are lots of lots of failure modes. Uh, but it's very important. And also, it needs cubo interrupt. Um, I'm going to go through this very quickly because it's very esoteric. You can poke your way through the repo at your leisure. Uh, and I would love to talk to people more about this because it's very interesting. Where did I put it? JS, IPNS, media IPNS. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to go through this very quickly. Uh, this is the wrong window. This is the right window. Um, so these are the these are the interrupt tests for um, Helia IPNS. So each each repo is uh, where it has significant functionality um, is now being bundled with its own interrupt suite. So these interrupt suites ensure that we can ensure that we can work with Cubo. Um, if we get like a, a Rust uh, um, PCP or Rust IPFS release on NPM at some point, it would be great to ensure that, that it works with Rust as well. Um, but in the interim, it's just Kubo. So, uh, I'm just going to run. I'm just going to run this one test uh, to prove that it works. So, what are we doing? So, we have uh, we have a, a name for our key. We create a we create a uh, create a peer ID with that, that name. We store it in the keychain. The keychain is very important because it means that it's encrypted at rest. Um, we publish a uh, we publish the the value, which is this CID that we've what we prepared earlier. Um, and then, yeah, we resolve it, basically. So we use Kubo to resolve the name that we publish on IPFS. So the, the, the number of calls on IPFS using uh, Helio. So this name uh, variable is an instance of IPNS. You'll see that uh, we, in the same way that we create it with UnixFS. We have an, an IPNS uh, factory function. We pass in Helio. We have one routing mechanism here, which is the DHT. Um, what else? So in order to configure Helio to, um, to validate and select records properly, we need to pass in the IPNS validator and IPNS selector. The reason it's like this is because maybe you don't need IPNS at all. And if you don't, why are you bundling all this code with all these extra dependencies? If you do need it, you need to configure uh, a validator and a selector for IPNS. Um, so here we go. So create a node, create a peer, uh, peer ID, publish a thing, and then use Kubo to resolve it, and then assert that what we get back from Kubo is what we published in the first place. OK. Run a test, build a thing. Um, these ones are always lots of fun to run with the DHT versions because you need to ensure that all of your, it's like you need to ensure that the node that you're publishing to is the one you think is going to get the record. Oh, look, it works. Amazing. Does it work in the browser? Let's see. Yes. Incredible. IPNS. Amazing. Um, Pinning. Uh, I just open a PR to Helio to add pinning. Um, so it uses some interesting uh, some interesting differences between this and JSIBFS. So originally, Kubo uh, defined how pinning works, and so all the pins are stored in an enormous DAG, um, and you would traverse that DAG while creating a, a list of blocks that are doomed to be removed from the block store. This turned out to be horrifically slow. 
Um, so JSON did a switch to using a data store to store the pins rather than a big DAG, uh, which was like massively faster. Um, but garbage collection was still quite slow because every time you did garbage collection, you would traverse all the pin DAGs ever um, to see which ones, which uh, uh, which blocks of pin and which ones were. Of course, the interesting thing about DAGs is they never change. So why would you do that? So what Helia does is instead uses reference counting. So when you pin a DAG, it, it traverses the DAG to ensure that the blocks are present. And where, where a block is present, it makes a note of the root CID and the block that it's encountered while traversing the DAG. Then it stores another record of that. If you pin, if you have like the same block that is pinned via two different CIDs, the same things happen and the reference count is incremented for that block. When you unpin a CID, you traverse the DAG again and you decrement the references for each block. If the reference is zero, then we know, then we remove that record entirely. And then when we come to do garbage collection, we just need to go through the, the data store and look at which, which blocks have uh, references, like any references to pin CIDs. And then if they don't, we just delete them. Uh, this turns out to be a lot faster than traversing DAGs. Um, so you can see from the, the benchmarks there uh, that like Helio is about you know a third, it's about half faster than Kubo, and then so half faster than JSIPFS, and then three times faster than Kubo doing the same uh, pinning operations, uh, pinning and GC operation, which is quite fun. Um, it says it says demo, but you know, well, I'm not really going to demo this because very easy to do it. But uh, this issue has all the discussion. Um, and then this PR here, number 36, has the actual implementation uh, and the benchmark suite. So I would invite you to have a look at that at your leisure. What's next? Uh, docs, more examples, other file systems, maybe. Um, definitely trying to make. Uh, things more approachable. So I think with the pinning API, um, that kind of settles the API for Helia. I'm not convinced it needs any other methods at all. I think all our functionality would just be modules that extend it a la UnixFS and IPNS. So I think I think it's safe to start documenting it in a way that uh, you know is approachable because I don't think the API of Helia itself is going to change that much. Everything else, I think, will be experimentation on top of it rather than changing the core of it. Um, but yeah, so we need uh, more of the examples porting and, and this kind of thing. So we're trying to pull some of these uh, like these points where people can get involved into actionable issues on the Helio repo is going to be the priority for the next week or so. Yeah. Uh, here under the demo, uh, this is now for the Q&A. Anyone got any questions? I have one question. Um, so th thanks for the introduction. Um, so if we were interested uh, in having like uh, gateway functionalities, would this be within the scope of this project or do you see it as something on the side that will be implemented externally? Um, well, I think if, if you have a need for a gateway, I think it's, I think if now that we have the, the gateway spec, which is a lot smaller than the, the Kubo RPC API, it should be relatively trivial to implement it using Helio. Um, I'm not sure I will personally be doing it, but like, you can see the way that Helio is extended by UnixFS and IPNS. So it would be trivial to just incorporate that into a simple web server that, you know, uh, answers the, whatever it is, the two or three methods that like you know HTTP endpoints that make up the gateway spec. Do you think this will be just the only missing uh, component uh, um, to make it possible to integrate it with something like say uh, IPNS companion, IPFS companion, the the extension? Um, I'm I'm familiar with the API of what would what would actually be missing. Is it just the gateway? Is that all that needs to be implemented? Yeah, because because previously it was letting you use like you you could use um, like uh, 
the previous JS implementation. Uh, but it, since it didn't support, uh, you know, gateways, it basically was very limited. Hmm. So you couldn't really yep. use it. You could run a node, but you couldn't really use it for, to resolve anything within the browser context. Right. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like it'd be pretty simple to to implement that. Thanks. Yeah. Th th thanks, Thomas. And I like if that's something you're interested in i don't know if you have interest in contributing um that i don't think we have an issue tracking that effort and i agree with alex it's probably is it's it's a separate thing that will consume it, uh uh helia versus by be, being baked into helia itself i will i will say there is a lot of general effort by other folks in the ipfs community around um the gateways in terms of making sure that they get even more fully specified and there's even some work getting started around having conformance tests of uh, gateway HTTP gateway implementations um, because there's obviously the Kubo implementation um, we've been on the Kubo side written in Go we've been extracting some of that logic out into a general library so that others can make their own gateway implementations um, so anyway there's, there's definitely a active area a lot of people in involved but i don't think anyone has raised their hand to go build a js implementation of the http gateway spec and it'll be awesome to see that get uh, to get built and if you're interested in contributing love to talk more Th thanks for asking any other questions Yeah, I've got a question regarding um, how uh, how uh, the IPNS resolution. So, so IPNS resolution, right? You, you pass in a router, right? You can pick the DHT. The, it, can you do uh, pub sub resolution at this point? Yep, yep. Um, if you look in the IPNS repo, you'll see in the interrupt suite, there's both DHT and pub sub resolutions. And of course, you can use both at the same time as well. Um, just for the for the test perspective, it's easier to split them into two things, um, so you're for sure which one's broken and which one's working. But yeah, for sure, you can configure both. I see. Okay. And in terms of like observability, what uh, what kind of like observe it, uh, like what kind of observability features do you get with the uh, with these kinds of operations? You know, because um, the DHT lookups. It, it, it's not like this yes or no type operation, right? It has to like traverse the DHT and maybe connect to new peers along the way. How can you like know what's actually going on if you really, if you if you're trying to resolve some problems or you're not sure what's going on under the hood? So these um the IPNS APIs have the first kind of like set of on progress events. So I'm just gonna share and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So in the could you zoom in a little bit? Does that help? I make the window a bit smaller. Does that? Mm. Oh yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah. So, um, Openness has these pro, uh, progress events. So you can pass in a um, you can pass in an on publish. Sorry, you pass in an on progress handler to receive events, and the events are these. Uh, you know, informational things, and you, you get a, a a context object, a detail object on the event itself. Um, the individual uh, routers also have their own uh, events. So you'll see DHT query events appear, DHT errors, uh, for pub sub. Um, you'll see publish subscribe and error event. Um, so you basically get all sorts of errors. Uh, so all sorts of um, maybe you get all sorts of errors. Hopefully you get all sorts of success messages. But you'll see all sorts of progress um, events, which you can use to kind of diagnose uh, problems with uh, resolution. Thank you. There's a question from Thomas about uh, ENS and. Uh, yeah, resolution on IPNS in chat. DNS link, yes. So yeah, DNS link resolution is also supported uh, 
via the resolve DNS function on uh, let me show you. So there's there's the resolve resolve uh, function on the IPNS object, which will use all the different, uh, uh, which will use the, the PubSub and the DHT uh, resolvers to try and find the DNS record. And then there's resolve DNS, uh, which takes a domain name, which will do a, a DNS lookup uh, and try and resolve the, the record that way. Like I intentionally split resolve and resolve DNS because they're completely different. There's no um, overlap at all in how they how they work internally. So, you know, all those progress events and all that kind of thing aren't really applicable to the DNS uh, resolutions. Just like look up the do the DNS look up for the text record and see if it's there or not. Um, so it didn't make sense to try and you know fit the round peg into the square hole of how resolution normally works. Um, which is very simple. Any other questions? Okay. Um, with that, I think we are a little over time. Oh, I have a question. Okay. Is it, what's your password? I hope not. Um, okay, I'm going to stop recording now. But thank you for coming, everyone. Uh, this has been the Helia demo day uh, for February the 20th, 2023. I hope to see you all in the next one. Okay, bye.